God is good. God is good. I, I want to just say this before we get started. Um, I didn't grow up in the church. So, so one of the benefits of not growing up in the church is that when you do give your life to Christ, you have an opportunity to compare. You can compare before I knew God and before I gave my life to Jesus Christ versus the time frame in which I've given my life to Christ. Praise God. And let me, let me just say this to you guys. It's, man, it is, oh man, it's, first of all, there's no comparison. And what I'm hoping for, for those of you who maybe grew up in it, didn't grow up in it, but you haven't given God your all, what I'm hoping for you is that this new year will be the year where you stop playing and you just give God an opportunity, amen, to just do everything he wants to do in your life, amen? And listen to me very closely. I'm not even talking about on no religious stuff. I'm telling you as a father who's not even godly, like I'm not, I'm not Alpha and Omega, I'm not the beginning and the end, I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near, can't even fathom what it's like to be the creator of the earth and, and how much he would love us and what he wants to do for us. I, I don't even understand what that means, but I know on an earthly level as a father what I want to do for my children. And I know especially for my son, I know it took some time, amen, before, you know, we got on one accord and he understood that. Amen. But I remember when he got on that accord and he realized that just what I'm able to do. I, I told a story before, but I'll never forget my son calling me and like, yo, dad, man, I need to get some, you know, if I can borrow some money. And I'm like, first of all, you don't have to borrow money from me. This has nothing to do with me and my son. I want you to hear what I'm saying in the spirit. First of all, you don't, you don't have to borrow anything from me. And second of all, you don't have to come to me feeling like nervous about asking me for anything. Amen. The last time I checked, the word says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. I just want to make, I want to make this clear before we go into the word today. Amen. I want you to understand you serve a God that is saying, a lot of times you don't have because you didn't ask me. Or you ask and you didn't get it right away and you didn't understand that some blessings that I have for you, you're going to have to knock. you have to put forth some effort. But I'm going to bless you. And I want you to understand before I get started today that many of us are not where we're supposed to be and it has everything to do with the fact that you're not where you're supposed to be with God. And this is all I want for you in 2023. I just want you to get in. I want you to, I want you to get out your own way in 2023. I just, before I get started, I just want to keep it 100 with you real quick. I want you to get tired of being where you are. Amen. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want some of you, like, you, like, you tired of you. For real, you tired of you. Like, you, you tired of the ups and the downs. Like, forget you tired of being broke or you're not where you want to be financially or, you know, your relationship ain't where it want to be. Like, forget all of that. You letting you down. And I want this to be the year where you could just really go in the mirror and just be like, yo, I'm sick of you. I'm just being real. I want you to go in the mirror and go, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of what you've done to me. I'm sick of the ups and downs. Like I'm sick of the emotional roller coaster. I'm sick of you not being consistent. I'm sick of you. I, just, I can't wait till you get to that point because a lot of you, you know what you're doing and I ain't mad at you, but you trying to act like your life messed up because of somebody else. I love it when people come to me as a pastor. You know, if the church would just, I'm like, when you just gonna say you sick of you? When you gonna stop trying to make it like it's the church? The church ain't got nothing to do with your life. Last church didn't have nothing to do. This ain't your first church and you still, this ain't the first church you've been to and you had the same problems when you was at the last church. When you gonna look at you in the mirror and go, I'm sick of this version of me. I'm tired. And I wanna be everything that I can be and everything God wants me to be. I don't know if I got any adults in the room, but I'm, I'm hoping you're going to adult more in 2023. <laughs> I'm hoping you're going to stop pointing the finger at institutions and other people and your upbringing. We all had some. We were all, get, all of us had like human parents. Amen? And we are human parents. Does that make sense? So, so ain't nothing on this earth. So I'm hoping it's going to be your last year. And this is why I'm telling you that. 
because your father in heaven can't wait for you to get on the same page with him so he can do what he's finally wanting to do in your life. Amen? So what I want you to do is this year, before the, 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 the ball drop, go home, and I want you to look at yourself in the mirror, and let's just let 2023 be the year of facts. Like, let's get out of our feelings and our emotions, and let's just be real about where we are and what's going on, and just take some ownership, all right? Do me a favor. This year, stop saying, uh, my mama, when I was little, my mama, <laughs> you grown. Hey, man, I'm just saying, like, we make all these excuses for why we're not doing what we're supposed to do, but we don't take no ownership for why we're still smoking weed at, at 40. You're 40 years old. Why are you still drinking at 35? Like, you, I ain't, my mama made me enough. Let's stop playing games. Why are you doing stuff you ain't got no business doing? Ain't nobody make you do that. You're doing that. So I'm hoping for you that you could just be honest about what's really going on because I'm trying to tell y'all, man, I wish... You know, people get envious and jealous and all that, so I can't always talk. My wife be getting on me all the time. I'd be like, leave me alone. These are God's testimonies I'm trying to get. She's like, uh-uh, don't be saying all that. Everybody can't handle that. So let me say it this way so I don't have to get on my wife's last nerve. Listen to me very closely. God is doing stuff for me because I'm finally getting to a place where I'm being real about who I am and what's going on in my life and giving God an opportunity to be God so he can bless me. Hey, man, I can't tell this one. This one I can't tell. Okay, I can tell this one. So there was a church that, um, or a, a, a division that banned me from speaking. So that's like Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. This was 2010. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I couldn't do nothing about it, you know. And it was so, it was so weird because... You know, it was no, like, end date. Normally, when you go to jail, they give you, like, you know what I'm saying? They give you a sentence. They give you five years, seven years, ten years, life. I didn't even get the privilege of having an end date. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I didn't get an end date. It's just like, whatever. But watch this. When you're in Christ and doing what you're supposed to do in God, God just blesses, right? So the first thing God told me to do when it happened, God said, don't badmouth nobody. And I'm trying. Some of y'all in this room... Even when God blesses you, you get curses because when things are going wrong, you don't know how to stop bad-mouthing people. So in 2023, I just got some tips for you. If you don't like the situation or you don't like something a person is doing, don't bad-mouth them. Keep it to yourself. Or, or don't keep it to yourself. Keep it between you and God. Right? So I ain't bad-mouth nobody. And then when I did get an opportunity to speak, I spoke good about them. Why? Because even if something is bad, it's a whole lot of good in it. But for whatever reason, we're consumed more by bad than we are by good. Can I just be real? So the reality is, it's a lot of good stuff that happened, and that's what I chose to focus on. So I got a call about three, four months ago that's like, hey, E. Now, here's what I love about life. Nobody even called me and told me the ban was released. I love, I love people. <laughs> I didn't even get a call that the ban was released. I just got a call, can you come speak here? Listen to me very closely. I did not go, well, somebody need to explain something to me or what's going on. I just said, praise God, if the ban is lift, I'm, ex I'm extremely happy to come and do whatever you want me to do. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Hey, man, can you, do you hear what I just said? I, I want you to hear what I just said. When I got the opportunity, I didn't go, I ain't heard from y'all in 12 years. Don't just be calling me like that. I want some, re like some of y'all, you can't move forward because you want some people to say sorry to you. God done already blessed you, but you, they got to say they wrong you. They got, you ain't even telling people you wrong them. Like, you ain't even telling people you sorry, but you want somebody else to tell you you sorry. I wasn't looking for sorry. I was looking for the door to be open again. Oh, uh, y'all missed what I just said. The door got open. I said, I'm on my way. Listen to me. God is so good, y'all. When I get into this word, I'm, the reason why I'm taking my time is because I don't want this to fall on death's ear. I want y'all to get this and embrace this word that God gave you. Matter of fact, the dope word, because a new thing I'm doing now is my wife and I are studying together and we're doing the message together. Amen. And the reason why is because, for real, I'm just being real, y'all. Like, we got to stop fighting each other and we got to start finding a way. Like, the devil will take your differences and destroy you. And me and Didi got a lot of differences. Trust me when I tell you that. We don't have a lot in common, actually. Like, our personalities are... 
polar opposite. But we got to learn how to work together. So Diddy would always be like, I, oh, that message was whack. I'm like, what? The anointing was fresh on me. You know what I'm saying? People was like, they gave their life to Christ. She's like, that's whack. I'm like, okay. So I started telling Didi, I was like, look, I, I, I'm not mad at you. You think I'm mad at you? And Didi be like, you don't never want nobody to tell you nothing. I'm like, that's really not the case. It's just you telling me after I couldn't do nothing about it. So you telling me the sermon was whack. I already did it. So there ain't nothing I could do about it. So I do feel like some type of way because you're talking to me about something I can't change. Right? So I just started praying about it like, Lord, this is a contention. Like, she telling me I spoke somewhere it was whack. They clapping, hallelujah, and she said. So I'm not taking nothing away from what she said because she is, praise God, my help meet. And you did bring her to assist me, but the way she doing it, it ain't working. So God, we was talking. It was like, oh, that's it. We're going to study together. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this message is brought to you by Didi. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Diddy all in this message, okay? So we just studying together, and then I got to get approved. Does that work? Does that work? Yep, that work. I'm like, all right, cool. So, hey, man, I believe God about to take my stuff to the next level. Amen. So I want you to get ready for it, though. All right? I need you to get prepared for it, right? So what I just told you, that wasn't feelings. That was true, that we have a difference of opinion, and that difference can divide us. But what we did is we sat down and we prayed and said, God, how in the world you bring two different people together? If you don't plan on blessing us, and God was like, I got it, just ask. So that's why I said, ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. So here's what God told me to tell you. He's about to do a new thing for you in a new year, and he has so much stuff he wants to bless you with, right? So I, I, I'm doing a lot, so I didn't want to say I was coming to Chicago until Monday, and I started putting the work out, I promise you. I get to the church. I get up to preach. Literally, I have not been in this church in at least... 12 years. When I walk into the building and get ready to preach, there's about a thousand and some people in the building. And God is like, I told you, I got you. Listen to me. You were not, I love my spouse. I love my children. I was not born on the same, in the same year as Didi. I wasn't born the same month. I wasn't born the same day. We came in a different time. We probably going to go out at a different time. Listen to me very closely. This is the first and most re important relationship and when you get that one right, everything else is going to be right. And some of you are trying to go to other humans. You're looking to make a certain amount of money. And I'm telling you, you can't run from you. Your bank account ain't big enough to outdo you. Your biggest challenge is you, and you're trying to make it somebody else. And as long as you stay the version that you are, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. But when you swear, do you know if I would went to that church 10 years ago and put an announcement out on Instagram that I was coming to Chicago that the numbers wouldn't have looked like that? But because I decided not to fight people over the last 12 years, I'll never forget, Moni was like, we need to go up there and we need to say something to him. I said, say something to him for what? For what? Like, look, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. If people are talking crazy, acting crazy, doing crazy, what do you think you doing crazy going to do to stop they crazy? And God said, do me a favor, son, while the doors are closed, work. It's my first principle. I want you to write that down. While things are not working, work. Stop fussing and fighting and uh, 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 taking people hostage and trying to intentionally hurt people's feelings and, you know, use your power to destroy folks. Stop, stop, stop. I got a big old social media. I could have blasted the doggone conference. I could have blasted their name. I could have said all kind of uh, evil about them. I'm good. Close the door on me. That's good. If that door closed, that means the Lord closed it. Hey Amen. Can't no man close nothing God keeping open. If God got a door open, can't no man shut it. God says, son, I'm closing that door. And you don't know why I'm closing it, but I'm closing it for your, let's do me. So they closed the door on me to the church, but in the last 12 years, God has opened the universe to me. Uh, you missed what I just said. God opened the world to me. I got a world that watch me. I got millions of people that follow me. So God closed the door. So do me a favor. Number one, 2023, when you go into 2023, do me a favor. When it don't go the way you want it to go, stop holding people hostage. Stop dogging people. Stop hurting people and work. In 2023, if you don't understand what God is doing, just work your way through it. And God is going to open up the door. And again, I'm not trying to be funny. I went back to the church and got a huge check. I couldn't believe they paid me that much. I didn't even know nothing about it. They negotiated with my agent. I didn't even, I, to be honest with you, I would have went for free. 
All right, now I want y'all to watch something. The door, shh, shh. Here's what'll happen when you work. Here's what'll happen when you work and stop trying to hurt people. So they closed the door on me and I was working. And my pastor, Pastor James Doggett, that's responsible for me doing ministry today, raised me at Oakwood College, raised me in my relationship, raised my wife, raised my kids. 12 years later, the door gets open for me. It gets open for me by who? James Doggett Jr. <laughs> How y'all miss what I just said? Junior was a kid when I was at Oakwood. He a grown man now who's in a position to open up a door. So while I was working, God was working. And God said, when it's time for you to come back in, uh, one of your, your relatives, if you will, your spiritual uh, brother, if you will, is going to open the door for you. So just work. And there are those of you, you're making your life worse by doing stupid stuff when stuff ain't working. You're sowing negative seeds, and now when God opens the door, he going to open it for you, but it's going to be a whole bunch of mess, even in the blessing, because you've been sowing so many crazy seeds. So shut up when it ain't working. Pray when it ain't working. Keep your mouth shut. Uh, 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 bless those that do uh, evil to you. Don't curse people, because you're going to reap what you sow. So principle, none before, principle one before we get started today, as we go into 2023, stop hurting people intentionally. And bless people. Amen? And when somebody's doing evil to you, bless them. That comes from the what? Good. One more time. That comes from the beautiful. That comes from the... And I told you in the beginning, I grew up in the world and I spent time in the church and there's no comparison. God's stuff works. So I want y'all to have a phenomenal 2023, but you cannot keep doing what you're doing right now and think you're going to have a better year. You're going to have the same one or worse. So 2023, we're we going to work. Come on, it's okay. We're going to work. We're going to do good. We're going to plant seeds. Amen? And for my grown people, do me a huge favor. I need you to work. Because while you're doing all that evil, you're teaching your baby that evil, and they're going to come up and have to pick up from your mess. Don't do them like that. Don't do them like that. If you're that upset about what happened in the past, don't do the same thing in this generation. Does that make sense? If you're that angry about whatever happened in life, don't put your kids in that same situation. Like, be mature enough to set your children up better. Don't leave them with your mess. Don't let them see mess, and then they got to grow up and do, and like, the same stuff you don't like, now they got to live that same life. Don't do them like that. Set them up for success. Praise God. 2023, let's get started. 2023, I want you to change your name. Good, write that down. I want you to change your name. Praise God. What's my name? I want you to ask God as we're going into the new year, what's your name? Amen. And I want you, God, some of you, you your, God has not given you your name. Praise God. Praise God. You calling people juniors, they, they probably don't need that. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Or well, you didn't give them a nickname. That Don't do that. We, this year, I want you to pray, God, what's my name? So one of the names that God has given me that I, I wasn't even comfortable with, and God was like, you ain't got to be comfortable with it. Just accept my name. One of the names that God gave me, one of the terms that God said, I want you to call, call, start calling yourself as billionaire. I was like, I wasn't comfortable with it. I come from a working class community. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where we come from, you know, like, you can look in your bank account and see how much you got. Right? God said, where I'm taking, you're not even going to be able to count. But I need you to call yourself a billionaire. Why? Because we're going to need you to build edifices. We're going to need that. We're going to need you to put kids through college. We're going to need you. We took kids to the Super Bowl. We took kids to Dubai. God was like, you're going to need money. It's a war. You're going to need money for what we're doing. Call yourself billionaire. It's like, praise God. Amen. Call, start calling your marriage something different. Amen. I told y'all before, I hear how you talk about your marriage. I see why it's messed up. The way you talk about it. The name you've given it. Amen. Talk to yourself. Amen. Talk to yourself in a way this year that God wants you to talk to yourself. Amen. Good. Say it out loud. What's my name? Come on. What's my name? I want you to go to God before the ball goes. I want you to say, God, what's my name? And every day I want you to ask God, God, what's my name? And I want you to, I want you to allow God to give you your new name. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go slow. I thought y'all would be excited. Amen. What's my name? Praise God. What's my name? What's my name? Good. When I was a kid, you know, uh, ADHD, 
you know, um, you know, you need to be put on Redland. You got, you, you, like, academically, your brain don't work. Hey, Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's the name the teachers try to give me. That ain't the name that God gave me. Hey, Amen. I was in Chicago ministering to a group of students, and I was telling the students before my daughter got up to speak, I was saying, yeah, they told me that Jada had a learning disability. And so, you know, I was telling the story about how I was shocked because Jada did so well in school. I never knew she had a learning disability in math and in science. And so when Michigan State accepted her, they was like, look, you on provisional. We're accepting you on a provisional basis. You're going to have to go see a tutor. You're going to have to get a certain GPA. My daughter graduated pretty much in three years. So when, I, so when Jada came up and spoke, one of the young girls asked her, like, yo, I feel what you feel. Like, I'm in school, and they told me I had a learning disability, and, you know, I struggled. Jada, how did you manage through that? And Jada said, my father said they said. I never said I, that I had that. <laughs> my daughter said, I ain't never claimed that. That's what they said about me. I don't have, I don't, and I don't have nothing to do about what they said. I never said I had a learning disability. <laughs> she said, I never claimed that. I did claim I have to study longer. She, did say, I, she said, I did claim that I, I, it took me a little longer than it took other students, but uh, disability uh, is means something you can't do about it. She said, I didn't, I didn't have a disability. <laughs> I just had to meet my teachers every day, and I had to take the test again, but I had no disability. And that's why I graduated from Michigan State in three years, and my brother, who didn't have a disability, took him four. I don't have no disability. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying? What are you naming yourself? There are people who have named you stuff and you've accepted it and now you're going through your life living that out and you're wondering what your problem is. You, get, you need a new name. You need, to, you need to figure out what God has been calling you all these years. You've been on what your mama called you. Come on, they called you a foster child and you felt some type of way. No, God put you in that position. They used to call me a bastard. My friends, your daddy, that ain't your daddy. You know that ain't your daddy. You five foot five. Your daddy six eight. You know that ain't your daddy. You know how they do on the block when y'all start, when you roasting them and you killing them and they always got that thing that they come back on you with? <laughs> that ain't your daddy. Oh, you funny, but that ain't your daddy. And as a result, there's a reason why you telling me that ain't my daddy because there's something you trying to do to me. And God is saying, oh, I, I ain't let your biological father in your life for a reason, son. I wanted you to be able to, when you go to a school, I, I, I'm giving you a new name. My new name is I connect with people in ways that most people don't connect because my father wasn't in my life. I connect with kids. I understand what kids go through. I'm, I, are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to switch your name. You a high school dropout. No, I'm not. It just, it, I'm, I'm getting the most out of my educational experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It took you 12 years because I'm, I'm simmering with this thing. I'm sitting with this thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm enjoying this thing. I got way more friends than y'all because it took me 12. I, I know a lot of people. You don't. You finished in four years and you was all studying and handling your business. You don't even know nobody. My friendship spans over 12 years. I know they cousins now. <laughs> they little brother. Hey Amen. You don't, you don't even know them. I know all their family members. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, so what I want you to do as we go into the new year, you are a divorcee. You single. I be hearing single people talk like it's a disease. Single? You better be, pra praise God. It might be a better, that might be a better choice for you. I don't, only God knows. You run around here acting like it's a plague because it's just you and God. Adam was alone with God. God didn't let nobody, God didn't even let Eve come at first. He's like, I just wanted to be me and you. Adam was single on purpose. God could have created both of them at the same time, but he's trying to show you, I don't want two of y'all to be one. I want us to be one. And then I'm going, some of y'all worship your spouse. You done made your spouse into a God. God ain't even God no more. God looking at y'all relationship like, man, I wish I had that. Man, I wish I was in there. Somebody asked me the other day at the, oh, Chicago Church. The lady was like, I'm sick. She's like, I'm lonely. You know, I'm, you know, I've got these degrees and I'm working and I'm lonely. And, you know, my family. And I say, you what? She's like, I'm lonely. I'm saying, oh, well, that means God wants to spend some time with you. You lonely. That means God want to do some one-on-one, -on -one, but you're trying to put somebody else in that space. So we're going to change our names in 2023. We're going to change our names. I love it. Malcolm. Changes now, he just put an X. 
So we're not going to call me that no more. I'm not, I don't want to be associated with that Malcolm before jail. I'm out now. I've been transformed. I have a relationship with the creator. I want a new name. For those of you who just call me Malcolm, I don't even know what the X is, but it means it's going to replace whatever was there before. Amen. Come on, come on. As we go into the new year, I need you to ask God what your new name is, and I need you to X out, amen, what your old name was. Because God wants to do something new. Amen. Come on, I want to take my time today. I, want to, I, I realize that there are those of you, you're not a bad person, but you're the same person you were 30 years ago. Like, God is trying to do something new, and other than you knowing who he is as your Lord and Savior, your mindset hadn't changed. You know how much your mindset has to change to be a billionaire? It's a lot of, it's, it's, it's been, I see why people just want to stay the same. It's a lot. It's a lot of responsibility when you become wealthy. It's a lot. It's not, it's, the money is the easiest part. It's the mindset that's different. Somebody called me the other day. I said, bro, what? I said, brother, let me explain something to you. If I gave you what you're asking for, you need it next month. You don't need money from me. You need a, you need a mindset shift. Money don't solve money problems. Because if I got to give it to you today, I'm going to have to give it to you tomorrow. <laughs> now, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Money don't solve money problems. Why? It don't solve problems because the Bible says in your gifts shall make room for you. So when you're not economically where you want to be, it means you're either no longer using your gift or you don't know how to use your gift. Because your gift is what's supposed to make room for you. Borrowing don't make room for you. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, and you shall borrow your way to wealth. God says, I gave you a bunch of gifts, and if you operate in your gifts and use your gifts, so you need a mindset shift. You need to stop thinking that the lottery is going to change your life. It's not. 80% of people who win the lottery in five years are broke again and worse off than they were before they won the lottery. Why? Because money don't solve money problems. Gifts solve money problems, and your gift shall make room for you. That's what the Bible said. That's why I was so geeked to get to Chicago. Why? Because my gift is going to make room for me. Good, let's go. And the Bible says in Genesis 35, 16, go home and read this. Then they moved from Bethel while they were still some distance from Ephraim. Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. My, 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 my. Let's go. And the Bible declares, and as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't, don't despair, for you have another son. Praise God. And she birthed her last, for she was dying. She named her son Ben-Onai, but his father named him Benjamin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ben Onai means the son of sorrow. Amen. So she named him in her difficulty, in her despair. She named him in her reality, not God's reality. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Some of us in this room, you were named out of despair. You came in this earth out of despair. You came in this earth and stuff wasn't set up properly. You came in this earth and things weren't. And so there's some things that are happening in your life because you came in and your mama named you out of her difficulty. She named you out of her sorrow. Praise God. But God's saying, amen, we're going we to switch up your name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody right now, you got you to gotta get this, right? You got to get this. God wants to give you another name. She, she didn't mean no harm, but she named her son what she was going through. Amen. She didn't name her son what God was going to do through her and him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. She named him out of her sorrow. She named him sorrow because she was in sorrow. She named him pain because she was going through pain. But praise God, amen. The Bible says, amen. His daddy came and renamed him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today, amen. I'm talking to somebody today. Praise God, amen. Praise God, amen. They've been calling you a certain thing. They've been referring you to a certain thing. The devil is a lie. Amen. The devil is a lie. Amen. And some of us, whether we wanted to or not, we accepted it. And some of us didn't accept it. But now we got a spirit of fighting in us and not a spirit of receiving. Hey, praise God. We've just been fighting our whole life because we don't like what they call us. Amen. God wants to rename you. Amen. So Benjamin said, no, 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 no. We're not going to we're not going to let that name stick. Amen. Right now, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus. Father, 
There are some individuals in this room today, it's not even that they were named what they were named, but the name stuck. And they, Lord, they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, they still living it out. They got stuck in that name. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ as we go into 2023 that they are renamed. Hallelujah, Lord, that you give them the name that you claim for them, Lord. There is an earthly name we've been given, but then there is a spiritual name that we've been given. We want to claim the spiritual name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And then for some of you, you had siblings, so you were around other people that got name wrong. So you in a whole house full of, <laughs> your whole reality is off. <laughs> oh, come on, talk back to me, amen. One of the things that I've been able to experience uh, as I experience wealth, amen, it's just a different, it's just different. So I'll never forget going to Duke University and I was with the football program, amen. And I remember the coach had a, a set of twins, amen. And they were about four or five years old. And I don't know what happened, but they fell in love with me. And I, and I remember, amen, I remember, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember their names, but their name must have meant something, amen, because the kids thought they owned Duke. Amen. And I'll never forget, they, were, they, they pulled me to the side. They said, Dad, we love him. We hope that he would stay. As a matter of fact, Dad, take that man's office, amen, and put his name down and put Mr. E.T. name up there. They were six or seven years old, walking around like they owned Duke University football program. Somehow, some way from a young age, they were taught that they were owners. And at six, they walked it out. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want y'all to see. I want y'all to get renamed. Amen. Y'all know how it is growing up in the black community. Amen. You, you, you like, don't touch that. Praise God, we got to get renamed. I'm not saying that people should be tearing stuff up. Amen, I'm not saying our cosign is gentle parenting that's going on today. I'm not saying that, amen. There must be a balance, amen. But their father at Duke wasn't telling them, don't touch. Oh, look at the names, don't touch. Leave that alone, get away from that. And then we grow up as adults and when we're introduced to our new name and our reality, it's tough for many of us to accept because we've been taught, don't touch that. Don't go by that. Don't go near that. When I sent the kids to Dubai, there was one young man. He about 16 years old. <laughs> I love him. He about 16 years old. He FaceTimed me because one of the, uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get the opportunity to go. And so one of the, uh, hallelujah, praise God, one of the uh, 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 chaperone uh, uh, told him uh, that he can't order that. I love it. He said, I ain't talking to you. Put Mr. E.T. on the phone. <laughs> he put me on the phone. He said, Mr. E.T., he trying to hold me back. I said, what happened? He said, I tried to, I tried to order an A5 steak, the one CJ was talking about on the podcast. And he told me I couldn't have one. I said, leave that boy alone. Stop. He's been taught enough in our community what he can't touch, what he can't have. If they sell an A5, let the boy have an A5. Why? I'm not interested in the steak. It's not about the steak when he comes back to America. I want him to walk around and know that he can have an A steak, A5 steak, and not a steak. I want him to know that on the south side of Chicago, on the west side of Chicago, don't, know, don't let nobody name you when you come back. Don't let nobody name you. When you come back, you can have whatever you want. Don't let nobody tell you it costs too much. It costs too much for you and your name. It don't cost too much in my name. Why? Because God says that I'm going to allow you to walk on streets of gold. So if God is going to let us walk on streets of gold in heaven, we ought to start practicing on earth. We're going to wait till you get to heaven. And for many of us, we're not waiting because we're being great stewards. We're waiting because in this society, we got named. And we still living out that name. I said, I, I said, bro, I ain't mad at you. I, I tell somebody that I'm not mad at you. I respect you 1,000 percent. But it's 2022. I, I ain't on that. Y'all ever seen the shirt with the young folk got on the new shirt? It said, "We ain't our ancestors." 
Don't come over here with that. We, <laughs> we got a license to carry. <laughs> Don't come over here with that. This ain't Emmett Till. You ain't about to kick nobody dough down and grab their child and murder them and not. This ain't that. You walk on, you walk on the door today in 2022, it's going to go down a whole different way. Come on, we got to rename. We got to release our babies. I was talking to Joseph today. I said, Joseph, bro, I'm not trying to be funny. I respect the fact that you're respectful, but you can't just keep playing in that. You got to, you got to come in here and create the music that's supposed to be. I'm not going to create it. I'm a pastor. That's not what I do. You, God has given you a gift. You should run it. And then I told you not only run it, you should get paid what? Way more than you make it. Speak up. Don't let us name who you are. You name yourself. This your gift. This your lane. You, you fix all that back there. You bring the band. You create it. And too many of us, we've been named and we're still in our place. Stay in your place. Ain't no place when you're in Christ. <laughs> Ain't no place when you give your life to Christ. Ain't no place. And I shall put a crown on your head. Ain't no place. The Bible said when he came home, after taking everything, his father still said, put a ring on him. Put a robe on him. Put a feast out for him. Why? Because my son, who was gone, who was named the wrong name, he back now. I don't care what he's been through or what he did. He has a name, son. <laughs> That's my son. I don't care what he do. Rename yourself. Somebody gave you the wrong name. Rename yourself. It's time, 2023. Rename yourself so you can do what? You can rename your reality. And praise God for Benjamin. Benjamin says, son of my right hand. Don't name him no, don't give, don't give him that name. That, that means sorrow. That name, that name means pain. That name, that means that mean difficulty. That was your reality. No disrespect. Some of y'all embracing the reality before you. That was their reality. It, it was, uh, there wasn't a whole bunch of stuff they could do. That was their reality. You were born in 1816. That was their reality. They went to Tulsa and burned that joker down. That was their reality. It's a new reality. We got to rename it. And they did what they did to show us what we could. They didn't do what they did so we could be scared. They were literally millionaires in Tulsa back in the day. The Black Wall Street. They did it so you could see what was. And so now that folks can't burn it down. You know what's crazy? Folks can't burn it down. But because of what the name was, now people are scared to build it up. <laughs> now, I'm going to get here. I'm going to get here. I got to say that one more time. You missed it. Because they went in there and burned that place to the ground. They gave us a new word, fear. And so those people were able to build that in slavery under those conditions. And now we don't even have the same, but we're scared to build because we're afraid it might get burned down. So many of us now, you, you, scared, you might even know your name, but you're scared to live it out because of what happened in the past. I'm telling you, don't do that. Let's go back to that last one. I'm sorry. Let's go back. I'm going to race through this, but they got to see this one. Son of my right hand, son of my strength. I'm the best version of my people. You are the best version of your people. You are the best version of what God, I'm the, I am the best version. I went back to Chicago. My aunt, by the grace of God, she, um, she bought my, mother, my grandmother's house, and I went into my grandmother's house for the first time in my life without my grandmother being there. And as I was walking up those stairs, I didn't walk up with sorrow. I walked up with, I don't know how many years I got left, but grandma, I promise you. I promise you, I'll keep this Monday, uh, the legacy alive. I promise you. My other grandma, Craig, I will keep this leg, like whoever comes from this family, they will be able to go through the history and they will have an example of what, that, what, what one of their loved ones pulled off. They'll have an example of what they capable of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This ain't just about you. We all only going to live for so long. The next generation, the next generation, each generation should look at the generation before and go, man, they did that. Oh, man, they set them up for that. Oh, they set them up for that. I'm really about to. He said, don't name my son sorrow. Don't name my son difficulty. Name my son the best of my strength. 
What's your name? What you going in with 2023? You going with that same name they've been calling? You going to keep doing what they've been calling you to do? And here's the cool thing. God has given us an opportunity to start all over again. So it don't even matter that I was a high school dropout. It doesn't matter. I got PhD at the end of the name. It don't matter that I was homeless. I own multiple homes. It don't matter. The past don't matter. And for some of you, you can't move forward because you're so consumed about what went wrong and thinking it's going to go wrong again. Ain't nothing going to go wrong but what you let go wrong. Y'all know how much control you have when you're a Christian? Maybe you don't have no control of your life when you, when you like don't live for God. But when you live for God, I can do all. Not only can I go to Dubai, I didn't send kids to Dubai. Not only can I go to Super Bowl, I didn't send 25 kids to the Super Bowl. Not only have I experienced wealth, I'm setting other people up for wealth. Do you know what you're capable of? You're not the son of difficulty. You're not the daughter of sorrow. You are the daughter of God's strength. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time. And Benjamin, the son, son, daughter of my right hand, son of my strength. Jacob would not allow his son to see himself as a son of sorrow as limited and defeated. One of the greatest things happened to me this year. My daughter sent me a picture. This is a new generation, y'all. My daughter be DMing me. I'm like, why are you DMing me? <laughs> but I got to accept it. It's a new thing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, why are we talking on the phone, like in here? <laughs> it's crazy, but this is the new reality. I have to accept it, right? So my daughter sent me a picture of, and I grew up watching Muhammad Ali. So my daughter sent me a picture of Muhammad Ali. He wasn't fighting. He was older. and He was on the outside of a rink like he was a coach. And then his daughter, I guess she was boxing, and she was in the inside of the rink doing her thing. And it said, <clears throat> the proud look of a father and his daughter. And my daughter sent that to me, and I responded, I've had that look before. Are oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying? It's nothing like a son, nothing like a daughter. Let's go. Number two, change your name to what God calls you. I want to take my time today, y'all. This is the last one of the year. Change your name to what God calls you. People have been calling you out your name, and you've either accepted it or you start fighting, and now your whole life is about fighting and scrapping your whole life. Let that stuff go. And what does God call you? And whatever he called you, you let that out. I was called academically dumb my whole life. Listen to me. I don't have an IQ problem. I got, I'm just too strong with my EQ. I don't got no IQ problem. I'm off the charts with the EQ. I'm off the charts. My love, my love's so strong that people who I'm close to be like, yo, E, you, you I'm like, bro, don't worry about it. You just, this is not your gift. So you couldn't understand loving people who not your blood. You just don't understand it. I ain't mad at you. It's just not your gift. You don't understand why. You ever look online, you know, all these cats going to Dubai, they showing off. I went to Dubai. Nobody ever knew I went. But you can't understand why I would send a group of, because most people that got money wouldn't use their money on somebody else and kids that they don't know. Most people, if they had money and they sent somebody to be Dubai, it'd be their family. I ain't send my family because that ain't what God told me to do. God, so, God told me to send a 15-year-old who ain't got no daddy, who don't have no mama, and let them see how valuable they are, how much somebody loves them that don't know them so they can learn how to love themselves. Change your name to what God, people tell me to academically, you struggling. No, I'm not. My EQ just off the charts, and the only thing y'all measure is IQ. Y'all need to start measuring EQ and I'll be, in, I'll be uh, the next Einstein. Perhaps the people who should have been speaking faith over you, affirming you, naming you victorious, talented, and a masterpiece just did the opposite. Perhaps the people that were supposed to talk to you a certain way, they didn't. It's okay. The person that was supposed to love you, that gave you up to some other family, and instead of you being able, you know what's crazy, y'all? Like this is why we, this is why we gotta, we gotta pray and pour in the kids. 
Because what will happen is the mama that don't want you, you like you'd be so hurt by the fact that she didn't want you that when you finally got a mama that did want you, even though it ain't your biological mother, you're going to dog her out. Why? Because your mama who what? And now you have somebody that does love you and try, but you can't even because you so focused on. And some of us in this room, God has opened up doors and done stuff for you, and you mad at the people that love you, you mad at the people that open up doors for you, because you still focus on the name that the person called or didn't call when the people who love you are calling you the right name, and you can't embrace it. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell y'all something. As a pastor, I just put out good, and if people bring out evil, it don't got nothing to do with me. I don't, I'm not responding. I'm just going to keep loving. And here's the one thing I love about love. I've had people in my circle of influence who've been talked out of being in my community because that person talked them out of it. But what I love is the person that always talked you out of it, they're not even going to be with you six months from now. <laughs> they didn't talk you out of a relationship and they ain't even going to be down with you for 10 years. But they didn't talk you out of yours and now you out of yours and you looking at them and they gone. It don't work like that. <laughs> Stick with the strip, the script, and stick with your click. Don't let nobody try to get you. So here's what you do. You just keep talking love and you just keep affirming people and you just keep on telling people they talented and they gifted and they gonna come back. Why? Because the world they going out to, they gonna figure out that they wasn't talking to you about love in the first place. They was trying to get something from you. They ain't care nothing about you. They was just trying to use you and once they use you up, they threw with you. Benjamin said, he said, I'm going to call you Benjamin, my son, my daughter. Listen to me. We out here in these streets trying to find love. God already told you, you my son, you my daughter, I, for I love you so much that I sent my only begotten son. Let's stay home. Let's stay with God. I don't care what you're doing in the streets. Come home. Like people kill me coming to church, not coming to church. This is going to be your best environment. This is going to be the best place for you. I don't care what you're doing out of there, but don't, don't stop coming here. Number three, don't ever use or answer to that name again. You got, somebody call you out your name, don't respond to that. Come on, they just in a bad place. They hurt. They not where they supposed to be. They don't mean no harm. It's nothing personal. But what I need you to do is I don't need you to respond to it anymore. If you, if you Jesus, if you the Christ, then, then jump off of this. Then call, listen, do that in Jesus' life. Be for real. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I don't have to answer to you. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am. I'm good. Whatever. He didn't answer to the enemy. When people say, you're not, you're not the Christ. You're not Jesus. F Father, forgive them. <laughs> they know not what they say. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them, Father. He didn't, he didn't go back off. Why do, why do you think going back off on somebody that's going off, why do you think that's going, what do you think that's going to help them not go back off? Somebody cussing you out and calling you out your name, you think you're about to talk some sense into them? I've never seen anybody who talking crazy get sense talked into them in the middle of them talking crazy. I've never seen nobody, uh, you're right, you just cussed me out. Thank you. I'm, I'm redeemed now. I just needed a cussing out. That's all I needed. I just need you to give me the finger. You know what? Thank you. He just gave me the finger, and now Jesus is Lord. Thank you. It don't happen like that. So when somebody call you out your name, don't respond. Don't let the negative things people have spoken over you. Come on, are y'all talking to me? So, they, she said this. He said that about me. Why are you giving energy? When I got released, people say all the time, why are you not defending yourself? I said, defend myself on what? They both know I ain't do nothing. This don't got nothing to do with I did something wrong, because if I did something wrong, it'd be like five years, seven years, 10 years. But you can't put a time frame on because I ain't do nothing. Well, they talking bad about you. This person, this person. I said, let them talk bad, because when God turns it around, I'm going to know who for real and who not for real. That's why I saw somebody the other day. You know, I always knew. I was like, stop lying. I saw what you put on Facebook. Don't, don't act. <laughs> Come on now. Don't try to act like you was always on my side. You was one of the ones. Are you hearing me? God is so good. I was at a restaurant yesterday, and I saw two of them. They saw me. I, they try to act like they didn't see me. I was like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> good to see you. They was forced to come over. How you doing? I see what you're doing. The Lord is blessed. I said, I know you see what I'm doing. 
I know you see it. You ain't got no choice. You don't lie. <laughs> I know you see it. And I ain't mad at you. You know why I'm not mad at you? Because God didn't want me with you in the first place or we would have still be together. And y'all still talking about people and dogging people out. I'm not on that. And I knew I was going to see you. Because the Bible says, you ain't going, Eric, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to be right here. Why? Because I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemy. I want them to see you. <laughs> I'm, the Bible don't say I'm going to bless you outside the presence. I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemy. Why? Because I need them to see my hand was on you. David said, I could take your life, but God says, touch not. Some of y'all run around here, y'all told y'all, stop talking, work. David could have took his life. David, as a matter of fact, said, I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to come over here and call your name. <laughs> hey, Saul, I put the knife right there. I just want you to know if I wanted to take your life, I could. Your little so-called soldiers ain't even got your back. I walk right up on you and put this right next to you, and they ain't do nothing about it. But because of Christ, look, stop fighting these battles, y'all. All you're doing when you're fighting battles is you actually planting negative seeds and they're going to come back and choke you. You better stop. That's your wife, whether you're mad at her or not. That's your husband, whether you're mad at him or not. You said that was your BFF. Either it is or it's not. You could be mad at people and still not dog them out. You could still be mad at people and bless them. And I'm going to tell you something. If you learn to bless people... Why they're at their lowest state, they actually get to see that you really do care about them. <laughs> Sometimes people just be needing to see. You know what I'm saying? They go about it the wrong way. Hey Amen. But they just be needing to see. So if you clowning when they down, then it shows like you really wasn't about that life anyway. You was really about yourself. And when I ain't do what you wanted me to do, okay, I'm sorry, we gotta go. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it, Jamie. I feel Didi on me. I'm coming. I promise y'all. It's the last one of the year. I got to get all of this out. I got to get it all out. We are so worried about how we dress, we forget how we address ourselves is of greater significance. You're so worried about how you dress when you go out that you're not understanding that how you address yourself and what you call yourself is more important than anything. Don't you let these other people name you. Don't you let your spouse name you. Don't you let your mama name you, your daddy. Don't let yourself name you. You go to God and you let God name you. And the thing I loved about Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali said at a very young age, I must be the greatest. Huh? Go back and watch his stuff. People couldn't stand Muhammad Ali. Why? Because he had so much confidence in himself. Very educated man. Believed in himself. Muhammad Ali said, I must be the greatest. I shook up the world. They hate it. They hate it. People hate it. They call it arrogance. They call it arrogance because he addressed himself the way he wanted to be addressed. He said, I'm the greatest of all time. I float like a butterfly. I sting like a bee. He just made up stuff for himself. He stopped some of you. You are reclaiming and re-naming yourself. You saying stuff to yourself that your mama said and it's going through your teacher said and you keep saying it, and now you become that person. I don't care how, I don't care how my, God, my God for this offends you. That don't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> my, God, my God for this ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm not trying to be offensive to you, but I'm going to call myself what God called me. Well, you running around here talking about you the number one motivational speaker of the world. I am. They've been doing it for years and ain't nobody had no problems with it. I started doing it now, you got a problem with it. <laughs> I'm the greatest. Why? Because God says I am. I'm not saying you not. I'm just claiming my greatness. I'm just saying wherever I put my foot. I'm not trying to put my foot where you put your foot, but my Bible says wherever I put my foot is mine. Don't be mad at me because I'm looking at my bank account and asking God to bless it. I got some folks to bless. Oh, come on, somebody. I ain't buying property just to be brag. I'm buying property because people need places to stay. And people have been making money for years on real estate. Why I got to watch people make money and not be a part of it? Last time I went to Dubai, it was all, all the rooms was... <laughs> Ask my wife, I'm not playing. This is this place I love in Mexico. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. $5,000 a night. 
I call, ask, can I get one? They say, oh, no, it's booked for the year. <laughs> what? It's booked for the year. Just because you think that's a lot of money, it's a, it's a whole bunch of other people that didn't, and they didn't bought the space. Hey, man, are you hearing me? CJ on the Disney crew, he says, Pat, CJ called me the other day. They was in Orlando before they got on the ship with their kids. He said, E, call somebody. I said, what's wrong? Universal sold out. Somebody else is saying, them tickets too much. They were sold out, all of them. I'm saying, stop naming yourself poverty because somebody named you that because you came up in that. Stop naming yourself that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm about to get out of here. Nate, rename your bank account this year. Rename yourself this year. I don't buy a new car because I'm trying to be fancy. I buy a new car because when I'm on the road, I don't want to break down. I told you, I drive an Escalade. Let me tell you one of the things they tell you when you get the car. Whatever you do, if something happens to your car, don't fix it on the side of the road. Call us. I love it. Caddy say, whatever you do, don't change the tire on your own car. I said, why? We know how to change the tire. We don't want nobody seeing our car on the side of the road. That's a bad look. So we're going to come take it off the road and fix it in the... <laughs> Y'all miss what I just said. We're going to take the car and take it to the dealership and we'll fix it in there and get you back on the road. But don't be on the side trying to and drop and not people looking at the... Yeah, this an Escalade. You listen to me. God says, I made you. When you do good, it makes me look good. If I shall be lifted up, I shall draw. Your bad marriage don't make me look good. You living in poverty don't make me look good. You not, you not being the best at what you do. That don't make me look good. And they shall know you by your fruits. It's time for us to name ourselves what God names. Don't even name yourself. Let God name you. All right, all right, all right. Last one. Live out your new name. Praise God. Live out your new name. Hallelujah. We, we through. That's it. We, we, do me a favor. 2023, stop living like you've been living. I need you to live to the highest level you could possibly live. Why? Because you're going to die. Just in case you didn't know, <laughs> I'm saying this might be new revelation to you. You're going to die. I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, sweetheart, I love you. I know what you want. My wife be in the saving. I'm like, I feel you. Let's save. I said, but let me be very frank with you. I'm going to need you to spend as much of this money as you possibly can and, and just put up enough where if something happened, we can. But I don't need you not spending because you're afraid we're not going to make it next year. I need you to spend it. God going to give us a certain amount in 2022. And what God does not need is you to save what he gave us in 2022 for 2026. <laughs> Oh, somebody going to get this. Everybody not going to get this. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. The God that blessed you in 2022, does he going to be the same God in 2026. <laughs> and what he don't need you to do is save all 2022 because you're afraid that he ain't going to be able to bless you in 2026. Oh, come on. I need somebody to hear me. So he's going to give us something in 2026, but what he's going to give us in 2022 is for 2022. And we got to be good stewards of that, but I need you to spend it, sweetheart. And this is why I'm telling you to spend it, because if something happens to you, and if something happens to me, and that money go to Jalen, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, sweetheart. <laughs> I don't know no better way to tell you. Hey, man, man. But he ain't about to be saving it. I'm about to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you right now. He's he going to be living in it. He's going to be wearing it. He's going to be driving it. <laughs> So if you want to set all your hard work aside for him to live it out, go for it. But I'm telling you, God gave you this for you to live. No, 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 sweetheart. These are fruits of your labor. When I was 20, when I was 16 years old and I was homeless and you came in my life. These are fruits of your labor. This is the stuff that you had to put up with as you were growing me and making me. This is the stuff that you had to go through as a young wife. You in school working hard. I'm trifling. This is, this is, the, this is God. This ain't for Jalen. God, Jalen didn't work for this. You, you, this is the fruits of your labor. I don't say it to brag, but that, that, that black badge Rolls Royce that I bought you, that's because that's you deserve that. 
You, you deserve a Rolls Royce. You should be driving in a Rolls Royce. Not because it's a Rolls Royce, but you are characterized. You a Rose. Characterize you a Rose. Who you've been since I was a kid, you always been stable. You deserve a Rolls Royce. And you ain't got to drive it feeling some type of way. You ain't got to feel like you bragging. You driving what you work for, what you deserve. That's what God wants. God, when you get in it, God wants you to see what you've done and what you deserve. My, my kid, my son don't deserve that. My daughter don't deserve that. Whatever they get, they getting because of what their mama was and who their mama is. Change your name. Yeah, we grew up in the city and we grew up in a working class and we're grateful for that because we wouldn't be where we are if our parents weren't working. But for whatever reason, God chose you to be wealthy because he knew you was going to take care of your church. He knew you were going to take care of the marriages here. He knew that you were going to make sure that the babies, we, we got a house in Cali. We don't got to be here. We here because you want to see the Christmas play, because you wanted to have a New Year's program, because you care more about your church than you care about yourself. And so God has rewarded you. And you better walk in what he gave you, because I promise you, Jalen going to walk all in that joker. <laughs> With no, Jalen ain't going to have no res reservation. He ain't going to be saving nothing. And so somebody in this room, God's giving you a new name, but you've been holding on to that old name. And because of that, you've been holding on to that old reality. And you're standing right now saying, God, I want to claim my new name because everything comes with the name. Everything comes with the name. And you've been living under your potential and you've been, you just haven't been living the way you're supposed to be living. And you stuck on 30 years ago, 40 years ago. You still own that. God is saying today it's time for you to walk in your new name. Not just Dee Dee. It's time for many of y'all walk in your new name. Walk in your new name. Why? Because that's the name your daddy gave. And you ain't got nothing to do with it. When you come to this earth, you don't get the name yourself. That's God's responsibility. That's somebody else's responsibility. And God is saying today, take the name that I gave you and take all the blessings that come with it and take this relationship. Don't just be taking gifts from me. I just, I want to have, a, I want you to have a relationship with the gift giver. And so if today is the day you like, God, I'm ready. When that ball drop, I'm ready to take my new name and I'm ready to take everything that go with it. Because I love my wife. She ready to take all the new responsibilities, but she don't be ready to take the rewards that come with it. She don't mind the responsibility. But she's like, Lord, I don't know if I... No, no, no. God got both for you. He got a set of responsibilities. He got a set of rewards. And you deserve all of them. You deserve all of them. And why? Because as a parent... We just decide what we give you. And it ain't got nothing to do with what you do. It's just because you are ours, we want to bless you. And so if you're ready, amen, amen. If you're ready, you're coming. You're coming. You're ready for that new name. You're coming. We're just going to pray real quick. We're just going to pray real quick. Amen. You're coming. You're like, God, I'm through with this mess. I'm tired. I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of the life that I've been living. There's some stuff in it I don't want no more. Period. I just don't want it no more. I just don't want it no more. I want a whole new life. I just want a whole new reality. I want my marriage to be better. I want to be better. I want my kids to have better. I just want better. Amen. For those of you who are able to kneel, kneel. For those that can't, sit in the chair. Amen. Sit in the chair. For those of you who cannot kneel, sit in the chair. Amen. I just want you to talk to daddy and say, daddy, for I know you know the plans that you have for me. I'm tired of doing it my own way. Hallelujah. 2023, I want to surrender. I want to submit. I want to be happy. Well, some of the stuff I'm doing is not leading me to happiness, but I do want to be happy. And that's why I'm doing some of the stuff because it does bring me maybe immediate joy, but not the long joy that I want. And I want the long joy. I do. And I need, to, I need you to change my thinking. I need you to create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit, a new mindset. The mindset that I have has been whatever. It got me to where I am, but apparently it don't look like it's going to take me to where you want me to be. So bless, in Jesus' name, bless. Talk to daddy right now, whatever it is, be honest. This part of my life, I don't really like. I'm not really satisfied. It's not going the way I thought it should go. And I need help. I need my children to help me, my spouse to help me, maybe my parent, my business partner, I don't know, but it's not going right, and we need to be truthful, and we need to help. Because I don't mind, but I don't want this life no more. I don't want to go through this no more. I'm tired. And so I've tried to fix it on my own, and that didn't help either. And so I need you to help now. 
that's you praying where whoever you are take that area or those areas to God don't be ashamed there is no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus he knew you was gonna do it before you did it there's no shame in what you did we're sinners we were born in sin we were shaped in iniquity the only sin is in not going to God and talking about it and letting him help you get through it so help me get through it God this is the year this is the year this is the year Lord it's got to be the year I can't have another one like this last one the fussing the fighting the separation and not talking I just can't have another one like this the disappointments the man did I do that did I do that again oh they calling me oh this challenge bro. I can't do this again we need a new year Lord we need a new year we need a new year. We need a new year, Lord. We need a new reality. We need a new journey. And we know you're capable of doing it. So we're going to get on your page this year. And you're going to bless us. And life's going to be great. Because it's short. So it doesn't need to be a short, miserable one. It doesn't need to be a short, lack one. It doesn't need, doesn't need to be a short. It needs to be, it's quick. So it needs to be blessed. And you didn't create me for it not to be blessed. The Bible says that I know the thoughts that I have told you, said the Lord. Thoughts for you to prosper, even as your soul prospers. For you to be at peace and not evil. I have an expected end. We want that to be our reality. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Show us where we are. we've erred. Help us to let go of our ego and our pride. Help us to stop doing it our own way. Push the refresh button, Lord, as we go into the new year. And may everything change, not because of us, but because you touched it. And we'll be so careful to give you all praise, all honor, all glory. I know you're capable of doing it because I know where you got, I know where you got me from. I know where I was. I know where I've been and I know where I am. And to God be the glory, great things you've done. If you can do it for Eric, you could do it for anybody. So I thank you in advance that you've not brought these wonderful people to this building just to hear words. But you brought them to this building to do exactly for me what you're getting ready to continually do for them. Now may they do what I did and get out the way, submit, surrender, tell the truth to you about how sick I messed up I am so that you can begin the operation process. So bless them, Lord. A year from today, May they all be intact. May they be better than they were when they came up here. And may we be able to worship you, honor you, and adore you. Lord, take this COVID and the sickness away so that we can fellowship more. We can have more fun together, Lord. Remove this sickness from the earth and bless us, your people. Bless our children that are represented, our spouses, our businesses. Whatever we touch, touch it for us, Jesus. And may it be blessed. Not because we're worthy, but in Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the believers say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're about to have baptism. Um, I think we've got six candidates, amen. Six candidates, amen. Who are starting all over again, going to the water, amen. Praise God. Thank y'all so much for coming. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.